Hey y'all, Coach in the Fire here, got Stacy and Chris with me. Hey y'all. Hey y'all. In today's video, we're talking about the timing of the morning star. So you probably just got me in here for the courtesy because <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna be able to add. This is you and Chris video. Um, well, not necessarily because you have a lot of the background information as far as the morning star and the significance of it. And we're not going to get too in depth with the celestial movements. Um, I've actually been doing it for a few days now, thinking of recreating it myself. I actually started a process using data from the astronomical applications department and some other places as I was starting to look at the timing of these particular celestials, trying to get an understanding of the timing of when this would be like Peter says the day star rising in your heart when does this occur okay. and what we'll find in this video is we look at the data we'll find some patterns of when this occurs it occurs every so often mm -hmm. it's just that we're not aware of it so we miss it or we have missed it most of the time right but now, you remember, Stacey, in the last video, we was talking about the Hebrew names of the wandering stars. Right. We wanted to call them by the Hebrew names to prevent from calling them by the mythological names, mm -hmm. the pagan names. So getting a little help from ChatGPT went in and asked for the names of the stars, talking about the traditional Hebrew names of the planets. Now we're gonna find out what these mean down here. It's gonna give some more meaning behind this. And the significance of this is we're gonna find out more about which one of these is actually the morning star. That word star, the magician, shit, play a hint. So there are your Hebrew names of the wandering stars. Then I start asking about the significance of those particular stars being shown at dawn. Mm -hmm. You know, what they thought about them when, you know, back in the times when they paid attention to such things. Like, for instance, this Hakasim is related to intellect, wisdom, communication, prophecy, as well as messenger. You see what it says about it when it appears at dawn? The dawn appearance is twilight conjunction moment of insight communication or divine messages represents balance between intellect and emotion all right now let's compare this one to the next star neged the time appearance comes as the morning star which signifies harmony love and the coming of a new day represents Reconciliation of opposites. Yeah, so this one has to do with love, beauty, harmony, emotional balance, desire, and reconciliation in comparison to the first one, which is intellect, wisdom, communication, prophecy, a messenger. So which one is the morning star? If not both. If we had to choose between one of these two, which one would you be expecting to be the morning star? I would say the the one that symbolizes love and beauty, harmony. What about you, Fred? I would have said Hakasim. The first one. Right. And as I asked that question, I thought about people could give different answers on what they're expecting the morning star to be. But what if they're combined? What if you have the combination of the two? That'd be more along the lines of what Second Peter was talking about. Mm -hmm. All right, so now let's look at some of these. Like we said, we got the names, we got the aspects of when they're at dawn and, and evening. So let's read through some of these as far as the morning star. Hakosham has the symbolism of intellect, wisdom, communication, prophecy, and messaging. And dawn, it symbolizes clear communication and insight, moments of mental clarity 
quick thinking, and prophetic insight. In the evening, it represents confusion, mental fog, miscommunication, period of slower thinking and difficulty making decisions. And with no appearance, that signifies a mental block, lack of clarity. The intellect feels distant, leading to poor decisions and missed opportunities. So when we come over to our table here, we have a column that represents that wandering star. That's this column here. Now where this information comes from is in the sky.org. It's what it calls a ephemeris. Never heard of that. But we got one of those for each of these planets. And what it shows is when they're visible, the time of the year, it shows a lot of information. Right. What this is, is just gathering the information of when it's available at dawn. When is it visible at dawn? The yellow is when it's visible in the evening time. The blue is when it's visible at dawn. The white, white is when it's not visible at all. Now over here in this column is Kimmel or Kizzle. I don't see which one exactly it is. But that's just the sun's position relative to the earth. But anyway, we'll come back to that. You want to read the next one? The next one is Neged. And symbolism is love, beauty, harmony, emotional balance, desire, and reconciliation. When it appears in the morning, it symbolizes emotional balance, harmony in relationships, and reconciliation, a time of peace, connection, and love. The evening symbolizes emotional imbalance, disharmony, unfulfilled desires, Potential for conflict in relationship or repressed emotions. And no visibility is symbolized by emotional disconnect, lack of harmony, struggles with relationships, and a sense of unfulfilled love or beauty. And I went on to gather the same information for the rest of the planets that you can see here. If you want to pause and take a look at it. And as we look at the symbolism of each of these things, you can notice that the first one, Hakosham, has stuff to do with thoughts. Neged has stuff to do with feelings. Ma'adim has stuff to do with actions. And Zedek has stuff to do with justice or righteousness. I'm thinking that there's a similar pattern in the book of Genesis because Shabtaya, which that is the Sabbath day. So I created this table that shows them. In this column, you have the date, then you had a position of the sun, the days of the moon, so you can tell when the new moon is. Then we have the visibility of, how did you pronounce it, Chris? Hakashim. Then we have Neged, and it even goes on to the other ones. But what this does is allows us to see the times in which these were the morning star. Like for instance, back here in 2014, we can see we had not only Hakasim as the morning star there for about three or four weeks, but then it also converged with Neged. They were both there in the sky. You right. can see many of the others were missing especially the ones that were visible. They were seen in the evening, most of them. But notice the significance of that date. July 2014, that's the time in which we were just moving here to Alabama, getting ready to make the full transition out of TVA. So let's scroll down here and look at some other times it converged. The next time you see a convergence of those two, bringing both intellect and love, was when? October 2015. But notice also you had the new moon and you had the seven sister stars in the sky. Right. Not necessarily visible at dawn like they were down here. But what was that date? 20 what? 15. And so that's a lot of that's the date when a lot of people point to the date in which they went into 
or started this walk. A lot of people got on this path. Yeah, a lot of people in testimony talk about that particular date, 2015, not necessarily October, where they talk about 2015 mm -hmm. as to something changing in their life. Well, this is what changed is they got the morning star. Not only did they have these two stars combined, but they also had the Moedim, the feast day planet, as well as Tzedek, the judgment planet. And look again, there's another convergence of those two. And what's that date? January 2016. January 2016. And so you can remember stuff that went on back then. What's this date? October 2016. October 2016. That's not so significant because you don't have a representation of this star in the morning. It's not part of the morning stars dancing together. So the next time we see them dance together is down here. What is that date? September 2017. September 2017, which is the date when many people correspond to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation 12, sign in the sky. And the children going into the wilderness. So that shows the significance of 2017. So when we scroll down through, you can see a kind of opposite pattern on this date. What's that? March 2018. 2018. That's the time when we discovered the Third Testament of the Bible. At least I did. Remember that? Right before that Passover. Mm-hmm. We was reading, well not reading, but listening to it, and was just deciding to go through the whole book during the Feast of Unleavened Bread that year. Right. So that shows that the, even the opposite has significance with the seven sisters in the sky during that time. What about this when you have one positive, one negative? What's that date? August 2018 or what? September. I don't remember much about that. We'd have to go look at like videos that was produced during that time. But what about this time here? December 2018. Again, we'd have to go use the videos to see what kind of uh, emanations we were getting during that time. So you notice how you scroll through here and you see blank periods. Right. So this is what the scripture means when they say they go out to look for the morning star and there's nothing there. Mm -hmm. If they don't have you know, a way of telling or knowing or intuition to tell them, they can wake up in the morning to go out to look and actually see nothing. Or just see one of them or the other one. Right. What is this date here? November 2019. November 2019 is the time when we start having a lot of dreams. In fact, I had a dream that prompted me to start making a lot of videos during that time. Remember that? The dream had something to do with me basically getting back in the fight because up until then, when I discovered the Third Testament of the Bible, the thing was to go through the entire Third Testament of the Bible before I actually started trying to teach it. Right. And so there was a long period of time when I didn't teach a whole lot of classes. But then once those dreams started, that's when like, you started your daily upload. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, you know, I was being told that something was going on. Then look at these right here in this time period. What is that? When is that? July 2020. July 2020. So you can remember all of the activities going on in, in 2020. You know, a lot of, you know, we did a lot of classes and stuff in 2020. What's this date here where you have the seven sisters as well as the convergence of the morning stars. November 2020. And one day we may add, you know, the information to it, but really we're trying to get this video out. But look at this correspondence here. This convergence here. When is that date? February 2022. February 2022. That's when we started, or we were making the videos about Jacob's trouble ending. And making videos about the clock. Or oh, that's about the time when we finished the clock. When we made the video about the clock. Remember, it was two, 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 two. Right. So, getting a lot of emanations during that time. But notice what all going on. You got a new moon. You got the seven sisters in the sky. You have the star of the seer or the star of the magician in the sky, as well as the star of the opposite in the sky. 
And then you have the Moadim clan in this guy as well. So that's why that's what's significant about that. If you remember, that's also the time we did the videos about Jacob's trouble ending. Mm -hmm. Predicting that the Russian war came during that time. That's what was going on. That's what they mean by emanation. It's based on star alignments. And that's what we mean. Like it's it's like playing a lottery because if you don't know this is going on, it's like we were. You you have no idea what's changing, but this is actually what's going on. So it's it's like playing a roulette or I forgot what those games are. Okay, what about this date here? June 2022. June 2022 is, I know for sure I got distracted by CERN because that's when they had turned everything on. They turned everything on in about March of that year, 2022. Started running, dealing with doing whatever. And then they officially started the year later on in like July. It's don't make a whole lot of sense how you start it, but don't actually start it. <laughs> but so something they were doing during this time down at CERN, I was distracted with. I remember that because I looked it up. Look at all of the alignments you have there. Right. You basically have all of them in the sky on that date, except for the seven sisters. Right. All what of them date could is be that? seen in the month. What date is that? 30. June 30th, 2022. So if it wasn't Kimmel, you have Kizu in the sky during that time. Right. One of which, according to the Keys of Enoch, is responsible for, is used in communication, communicating these emanations. It's like one of them is a source and the other one is a satellite or some type. You have to go back to the Keys of Enoch. But anyway, we plan to do that in another video, Father Wayne. So what day was that again? June 30th, 2022. Because you won't see another date like that for a long time. So you can imagine if you were waiting for the morning star, and you are, this is where you're going to get your love. This is where you're going to get your intellect. This is where you're going to get your wisdom. This is where you're going to get a whole lot of stuff during these, this time. So you're waiting for the morning star to reappear. And so it looks like it does again, where you have Qasem, Neged, as well as the moon on what date? September of 2023. September 2023. So you have to go back to the time when the Jewish people were getting ready for their uh, fall festivals. And all of that time, there was something significant going on. So it takes you to January 2024, which was around Hanukkah time this year, when it was vitally important to have a lot of joy during that time. If you remember, a lot, there was a lot going on during that time. Mm -hmm. So now you see yourself waiting again for the convergence of the morning star. You may go out there and catch Kassim, but notice how even harder it would be to catch that one. It's the morning star. And then to catch the convergence, you have to wait again to win. August 2025. August in the year 2025. And notice how many line up then. And then again, you'll be waiting again for another morning star to appear when? November 2026. November 2026. And look how many line up during that time. That will be actually a significant time. Very big time. See how big that time is? You have the seven sisters in the sky. You have... The new moon right there about that time. You have Moadim, mm -hmm. Neged, Hakasim, and even Tzedek is right there along that time. Then you'll be in a kind of a dry spell. Very short convergence in what year is that? July 2028. July 2028. But then what look what happens? October 2028. The time that we're expecting the fulfillment of the 2000 year prophecy of the Messiah. A lot of convergence is going on during that time. And that's as far as we make it. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about the morning star. We're talking about all of this light going both ways, in, out, sideways, all kinds of light, understanding, guidance, even dawn, even real three dimensional light. 
Right, and I hadn't realized how rare it was for it to be in the sky. I thought it was up there at least half the time, but it seems like it's only up there a fifth of the time. And when you consider that it's more than one, and that they're making the conjunctions like the morning star. And so we understand that these star alignments have something to do with all of this. We're finding out now that the star alignments have to do with everything. So we just continue to analyze the data, maybe even put something more with it. But we can see, like you said, how rare it is and how significant this could be for this to you know to be going on behind the scenes and we're not knowing about it. How it's playing a scene. Wow, really big part of our life. It's amazing how they coincide with so many significant events throughout these past ten years. Like I said, we may collect more data. But if you got anything out of this video, guys, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't hit the dislike button, but leave us a comment either way. And shalom. Shalom.